everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome back to another craft night with friends. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so today we are going to go through the process of making a simple zipper pouch. So I, we just finished uh, this zipper pouch last week that had a curved top. Uh, we've also made a few other zipper pouches here, but we've never done, I don't think, just the most basic zipper pouch with a lining. So I'm going to go through that process tonight, and you can follow with uh, if you got a zipper and some fabric, or uh, you can just watch afterwards as well. But I'd love to see any of your creations over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Uh, I think this is going to be fun. You can use these for anything. Who doesn't need another little extra zipper pouch? I actually have a uh, I, what I know I know I'm gonna use it for already I'm gonna <laughs> I need a little bit bigger computer accessories um, zipper pouch to throw in my bag so that's gonna be the plan for mine <laughs> but all right let's get going I think this is gonna be fun all right hello everyone nice to see you all pop in okay so a little zipper pouch so like I said we made a uh, rounded top zipper pouch uh, we finally finished that on uh, last week, so I wanted to make just a simple, simple one. So I have not cut fabric or anything yet, so we're going to talk about all of that. So to start off, I have a zipper here. So there's, and it this is a nine inch zipper, and uh, how you measure a zipper is from the stop to the other stop. So where those little metal pieces are at the top to the little metal piece at the bottom. That's the measurement. It's not the whole entire zipper tape. It is just from stopper to stopper. Uh, I believe mine is a nine inch. Yeah, mine's a nine inch zipper. So uh, uh, you can actually shorten a zipper if you want. Uh, we're not going to go over that. Uh, today and you can actually lengthen it with some fabric tabs as well so uh, so we're not gonna do either of those but maybe we'll do this again where we where we do like one level up where we can shorten or extend the zipper but I'm gonna use I'm gonna base my zipper pouch just on the zipper I have so mine's a nine inch zipper I am going to add an inch to that measurement for my lining and my front pieces uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to have a half inch on either side of the stoppers. And then when I sew it together later, that'll give us enough space so we don't hit hit those metal pieces later. So a uh, nine inch zipper. So measure from your stopper to stopper. And then, like I said, I'm going to add an inch. So I'm going to actually cut a piece that's 10 inches. This is a nine inch zipper, so I'm going to cut 10 inches. And uh, then the, the, how tall you want your bag is totally up to you. It doesn't matter. I think I might make it kind of a little bit bigger here. Let's, let's see, like kind of like, ooh, that's maybe a, maybe a lot big. Let's see, that's six inches. I might want it a little bit more. I might want like a seven inch one. Keep in mind that I'll be losing a, a quarter of an inch to this too, but I want kind of a deeper pouch, I think. So I think I'm going to go for seven inches. So we'll go a 10 inch by seven inch piece. And you're going to cut every single one of your pieces to that. So this is going to be my outer fabric. And this is going to be my lining fabric. You can use whatever fabrics you want. Um, and uh, I'm just using normal quilting weight fabric. Uh, just so you guys know, this is a nylon zipper. So whenever a zipper looks like kind of plasticky or, um, you know, it's the same color as the tape, uh, it's most likely a nylon zipper. So those you can actually safely cut through with the scissors and sew through. I mean, there might you might get it just at the right angle that maybe your needle will break, but most likely you'll be fine. If you have a metal zipper and you want to cut it, uh, you can't cut right across. You'll have to cut up to the zipper and then just kind of trim in between the teeth. Uh, but other than that, it's going to be the same process, whether you have a nylon zipper or a, a metal zipper. Okay, 
So, and just for some anatomy, the zipper, the teeth is called the coil. Um, you have the tape on the sides, the zipper pull, and then you have the zipper stoppers, the zipper stops. All right, so I need a 10 inch piece by a seven inch piece, two pieces for the uh, fabric that I want on the front, and then the same measurement for the lining. So let's give our fabric a little press. This is a very, very wrinkly piece of fabric, so I actually might spray this down. I dug into the old penguin and fish scraps here. This is from the, the um, Sweet Tweets fabric collection from, from years ago here. I have a whole bin of just random size pieces. I think we'll be able to get a, whew, this has a little stain on. That's probably why it's in this scrap bin. That's fine. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be throwing this. I'm going to be using it as like my, like computer chargers and all that. All those sort of goodies that I have with my computer, phone chargers, all that silly stuff. So this is going to be thrown in and out of my bag a lot. So I'm thinking it, it'll probably get a little bit dirty anyway. <laughs> but yeah, this was a test print, I think, and you can see that um, it's a little smeared here. So maybe I'll try and avoid that area if I can. So let's get let's get this little area too. Actually, don't mind if there's a little a few errors in here. That's why it's in my scrap bin and. Not somewhere else. All right, and I'm probably gonna stack all these on top of each other to, to trim them as well. So there's that piece. Let's give our lining piece a press. So I hope all you are having a fabulous Monday. I'm excited to do this. This is a fun thing that came up. Oh, I got two pieces here, that's fun. Uh, oh, these were sample pieces too. They, they're they labeled. Um, which is kind of neat, breaking out old samples. So this might have been before this was even printed for real, actually. Just strike-offs, which are just test, test prints. Do I have an inspiration when designing fabric, it usually starts somewhere and then I expand off of this. So I think, I think this particular collection, so these are both from the Sweet Tweets collection. Uh, I think it actually started, I think I just did a little doodle of this, um, this cardinal right here. And I think that was kind of the spark for this whole collection. And these are exciting kind of more playful prints from the collection, but there are kind of like a nice lattice print. Like it is actually a little kind of classy too. This is, these are kind of the fun prints from it, but it's neat to revisit them. I, I try and keep my penguin and fish fabrics separated from other stuff. Um, and like I said, these are random scraps. So I'm like, eh, random scraps is perfect for zipper pouches. All right. Oh, let's get this side a little bit more. There we go. All right, plenty fine. Let's trim these up now. So I'm gonna try cutting these all at once. So there's a lot of excess nothing on, on here. Oh, get that zipper out of the way. Okay, I'm assuming I have seven inches worth here. Ooh, kind of just barely though. All right, so seven by 10 is what we're gonna go for. And I'm actually gonna cut the lining at the same time. So I'm gonna just fold this like so as well. Probably don't need that much. And I'm just lining these edges together so I cut, can cut off the selvage. Let's get this a little higher. I'm not gonna leave the fold at the bottom. We'll be trimming all of that. Could have had these pieces prepped for you guys, but I, I do think it's kind of fun to see the whole process here. So 
then you can see just some decision making along the way too but all right I think that's good I'm going to cut uh, along that edge there again I need, I'm going to cut off all this extra selvage all this stuff I don't want any of that Ooh, getting the cut and glove oh yeah did, did you guys see the TikTok um, on Friday during the live? <laughs> if you were here Friday, I kept stopping to take a video on my phone for, for the TikTok. So thanks for hanging out, me, uh, out with me for that. Uh, I think that was kind of fun. Uh, but I did do that, that TikTok. Uh, so that's, that's up there. All right, I think I'm gonna rotate this. Actually, let's cut, this is all scraps. I'm gonna cut my, um, this is the 10 inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, we're gonna go right there. So this is gonna be the width. All right, so these little scrappies can hide away. Um, let's see. I think I'm just gonna cut from the bottom. So I'm gonna just slide this down a hair uh, so I can cut those folds off. Cutting this kind of awkwardly, but we're getting it. Getting all four pieces at once. That's the, that's the nice part. Okay, so I said I wanted it seven inches. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's like so. I'm tempted to make it even taller. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go uh, eight inches. I think I have enough fabric for that. If not, I'll trim it back down. So we're gonna make an even taller, taller one here. That's what's fun. You can make them however you want, whatever size you want. Okay, good. So we should have all our pieces here. Let's give it a look. Just make sure I cut enough. All right, lining piece. That's really pretty. These are supposed to be little eggs. <laughs> That's why it's with the um, the bird collection, the sweet tweets collection. All right, so that is the two lining pieces and then we have our two our two um, front pieces this one I might actually give another little press here this is our little kind of weird dirty piece but that's okay that's what scrap projects are for and this is just gonna be for me so if I was giving this to someone I probably would have <laughs> not put that uh kind of muddy fabric that, where, where it has that printing defect in there. So typically I wouldn't want to do this either because this might distort um, the size a little bit, but I want to get rid of that big crease in there as best I can. And we'll just check to see if this is about the same size. Right, I think that's good. Just double check here. Yeah, we're fine. This guy could use a little bit more squishing too down here. All right, so I'm gonna call this messed up piece the back. All right, so let's get to it with the zipper now. So I'm going to take a lining piece. We're going to work with the lining and the front fabric at the same time. We're not like making the front first and then making the lining after. It's kind of at the same time. All right. So I am going to center my zipper here. And by centering it, I just, uh, I'm going to, those uh, end points there, I want to be, since I did an inch bigger, I want to be about a half inch from either side of those metal pieces and I am laying that upright as well. And I like having the zipper at the left. So this will be the closed position with the front. Um, 
yeah, so I like going on the left like so. You could mark the middle. I am just totally eyeballing it. I think we're going to be fine. Okay, so after we have that placed, now I'm going to take the front piece and I'm going to put it uh, with right sides together. So this actually kind of looks the same on both sides, but this is the right side, so that's going to go down. Um, so this is the right side up. The zipper is the right side up as well, and then the the uh, front is going to go right side down. And w our goal is we're aligning these top edges here. So I'm going to just align that, and I can align it with the lining. That's that's the trick is to have it with the lining. All right. So now I'm going to just take some wonder clips and clip this. You can use pins. I like the wonder clips. We used pins for our curved one. Um, but that one was a little bit more intricate. We had a whole lot of stuff here. Here is just a straight line. So we have all three layers here now. So got to get all of those together. And it can be a little tricky around the zipper pull. I'm actually going to pull that a little bit down just to kind of get it out of my way. Like I, it's towards this clip now. And I'm going to just straighten this out again and then finish aligning that edge. There we go. All right, so we are ready to sew. Uh, I'm, I'm not sewing with a zipper foot. I can talk about that a little bit. Let's see if I can find um, a little zipper foot here. Let's see. Um, let's see, I can't find white what I'm looking for for a zipper foot um, yeah so uh, we can talk about the zipper foot though we talked about this a little bit uh, yesterday but or on, on Friday but a zipper foot allows you like if I open this up it would allow you to sew right along the edge of that coil so you can almost be butted up right against it just about. Uh, and uh, how it does it is it gets rid, the presser foot, it, it kind of gets rid of a whole foot. So your needle can uh, be allowed to go right up against there. Otherwise the, the coil's in the way. So now's the time to switch to a presser foot if you got one. Uh, my, my little oldie machine here does not have, or I do not have a zipper foot for it. And I am confined to this machine still uh, until I can get any of my other machines working. But a zipper foot would basically be uh, this without without another foot. And typically you can do it where it can be on either, the needle can be on either side. But we want the needle to the left. And um, so if this is your zipper foot, you want your needle to the, to the left of that. I do not have a zipper foot, so I have this whole extra bit here, this whole extra foot. All that's going to do, it's we can still sew, sew a zipper. Uh, all it's going to do is I'm going to be this foot, that, that distance, that width, away from the zipper. So I am not going to be able to get... I am not going to be able to get my needle right up to the edge because uh, my foot will be in a way. So mine will probably be more like right here. And same same with on the other side. So I'm going to have a lot of zipper exposed. Typically, uh, when people sew with the zipper, they want it right up against the zipper. So all you see is the coil. I think it's actually kind of cute, especially with these colorful zippers, to see a little bit more of the zipper. So I'm not super hung up on having that zipper foot. But if you do want to get right up against that, that uh, zipper coil, 
now is the time to change change the zipper foot. All right, so I'm going to just start right at the beginning here, and uh, uh, whether you have a zipper foot or a foot like mine, you should be able to get this uh, your edge right up against that zipper. Like you could you can feel the coil butting up against um, the edge there. Um, I'm also watching this edge here. There we go. You can kind of see the bump where my zipper is. So I'm going to just uh, start by going forward and backwards here. All right, so I'm sewing through all three layers. Remember, I have the zipper, the lining, and um, the front piece. So I'm going to go to this first clip, and you can see I'm, I'm pushing against that, that zipper edge. All right, so as you sew, you're going to get, I have a bump there, and what that bump is, is our zipper pull. So that can be, get totally in the way while you're sewing zippers. So what I like to do is I sew a little bit in. Um, I might actually go a hair farther. Oh, I think this is probably far enough. But once I'm a little further down, since I've put this a little lower to start, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, my needle's about there. But with the needle down, I'll flip this back open and then I'll zip this all the way back to the top once I'm past it with my sewing machine. And I'm not quite past it, but um, I'm close. There, and now I have an open space here again where I don't have to worry about, worry about that guy getting in the way. So let's just keep sewing along the edge here. Move that clip. Still butting up this edge against the, the zipper. Okay, that's all there is to that. Let's go back tack for a few stitches to lock it in place and forward again. Okay, let's check it out. All right, so I'm gonna just snip the thread off. So what we have, you know, our lining. Now if we turn those right side out, we just flip this one over the zipper and then we actually lift the zipper up like so and then f have the lining flip over as well so kind of a little mind bender there but we've just taken it was this way we've taken both pieces and flipped them the other way and that is our first side of our zipper pouch and that'll be the lining for that side so that's that. You can see, I think we, we sewed pretty evenly. Uh, our, the distance between the zipper and the fabric seems pretty consistent all the way down, which is great. And that comes from like me butting up against that zipper pull. Again, if you are using a zipper foot, you'll probably be right up against the zipper. You won't have this big gap, uh, but I actually kind of like that. <laughs> all right, so that's the first side. We are gonna top stitch this down, uh, but I thought we'd, we'd finish up the other side first. So uh, let's do the same thing again. You can actually kind of ignore that we did anything here. Just just think about this other zipper edge. So, all right. Oh gosh, this is hard to tell. What's the front and the back too? Ooh, I think that's the front. Yeah, okay, that's the front. I wonder if we did this right. They look so similar. Okay, yeah, we got that right. <laughs> All right, so the right side of the lining up facing you. And then the zipper, make sure you get all this fabric out of the way. Make sure it's folded down. You can even press it at this point, but we're gonna press it um, later. 
So I'm going to align that top edge with the edge of the lining. And again, all the other edges, uh, the left and right should line up at this point, not the bottoms anymore, but the sides should line up. Scooch over a hair. All right, so you can totally mass make these. Like if you cut a ton of fabric all the same size and if you have a lot of the same size zippers, you can just zip, 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 zip through a whole pile of these. That's why they make like great gifts and everything, I think. All right, I'm, I'm gonna open this just a hair again, just so I can clip all the way to the end. Okay. Uh, and if you have fabric that's directional, meaning like things should be upright on it, this is a tossed pattern where, you know, all the birds, everything are all different directions. So no matter what direction you go, there's no like right up and down. Uh, if you do have directional fabric, you're always going to remember that the zipper is the top. Well, at least in this case, my zipper is going to be at the top of the piece. It's not going to be like on the side or something. So if your zipper is at the top, always have the uh, um, things going towards the top. So like, like this bird, let's say that bird is, um, the direction that all the birds are going, his head is going towards the top. Same with the lining. Um, the part that touches the zipper should be the most upright part. Again, my fabric is non-directional, so it doesn't really matter all that much. All right, let's get this guy lined up. So now this is the right side down. So up to this point, it was the zipper is up, the lining is up, face up, the front fabric is face down. Okay, align those edges and uh, let's clip that top again. I'm just aiming it towards me so I can see that with clips a little bit better. Get it all nice and lined up. Grab from the side. But yeah, I, I've done that before too. Just made a whole, a whole uh, pile of these all at once. One more. Uh, that zipper is there. We'll have to move him later so he's not in our way. But let's get that last little guy at the bottom here. All right, so now we... Oh, I didn't really line this up very well. That's good enough. Yeah, we'll be fine. Um, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew from the top to the bottom, and I'm going to be butting up my presser foot against that coil again. We're just going to go all the way down. And once we get to where that uh, zipper pull is, like down here, I'm going to stop with the needle down, and I'm going to just shimmy sham it out of the way, and then sew the rest. All right, let's get to the machine. Ooh, tying myself in knots here. There we go. Okay, just trying to kind of move everything until I'm right up against the zipper coil. There we are. And we'll get our little tacking going. forward. Move you out of the way. Just watching that I have all those three edges lined up and that I'm going at the, the foot against the coil.
This actually would be an awesome project for those orphan uh, qu uh, quilt blocks to just make make some zipper pouches out of quilt blocks. I think that'd be a cool idea. All right, I'm kind of approaching that zipper pull, so I'm gonna get my needle in the down position just so it holds everything in place, and then I'm gonna lift this up. Oop, just the top layer. And I'm gonna shimmy sham this guy out of the way. Let's just go around the foot. If you can't get it around your the presser foot, ooh, and this is actually being kind of tough. You can actually, um, there we go. You can actually stop sewing and take it off the machine and move the zipper foot and then go back onto the machine in the same spot. Uh, that's totally fine too. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so you can, can take it off the machine and get it back on. Not a problem at all. All right, I'm just checking that all my three pieces are aligned and we're gonna keep going here. It's so much easier though without that silly zipper pull in the way. And sometimes you might have a decorative zipper pull that's even bigger. Like it might be like a, you know, a, you might have a, like a decorative pull on it already or like a circle or something like that. Um, you'll definitely probably have to take it off the machine to get it out of the way. So one little stupid thing about sewing zippers, but the rest is not, not all that bad. All right, that's the second one. So let's snip this and uh, we are ready to move on. All right, I'm just snipping this side quickly. Okay, so we can do the same thing. Flip that piece over. You can close the zipper again if you like and flip the lining piece over. And we have our front and our back and our front and the back lining pieces. So you should have this kind of rectangle now with the zipper down the middle. Uh, next up, we are going to press this guy. So uh, to get, you know, you might be looking at this and be like, ugh, well, this is really poofy and, you know, my zipper is going to catch all that extra fabric and all that. We're going to take care of that next. We are going to actually top stitch these uh, edges down. So we have a super duper, really pretty clean edge. But first we're gonna press to get us there. I think we can go this way. All right, so I'm actually gonna pull the lining pieces, make sure everything's flat, but I'm gonna kind of pull the lining pieces so it feels like it's away from the zipper. And then let's get these guys hold as well. We want to really get into these seams and get them flat. Ugh, this is going to be so cute. I think this blue zipper was a fun choice for this little teal zipper. So I'm going to try and get down in there. So even on these nylon zippers, it's totally fine to iron on them. So don't worry about that at all. Uh, if the zipper pull again is in the way, just, just get them out of there. All right, I think that's looking pretty decent. All right, I'm gonna just sew them back up again, or zip them back up. And uh, next up, we are going to do our top stitching. So I'm literally just going to, let's just double check that this didn't, yep, this is nice and flat. Should maybe press on this side too. I think we're pretty good though over here. What's nice is that we don't have any raw edge to the zipper. It's finished really nicely on the inside and the outside, which is great. So a top stitch is a visible stitch. So we will actually see this on the front. So it might be an opportunity to play with color, or you could even use a thicker thread, a decorative thread, or I'm gonna just keep it the same. So mine's gonna kind of blend in, but it's gonna be just like a 16th to an eighth of an inch from the edge. Uh, and that's gonna sew again all of these three layers together, but it's gonna hold everything in place. So these will never like poof up again. It's gonna hold it, and it's gonna give it like a really pretty nice finished look. So all right, let's let's uh, just do this side first, and then we'll 
move on to the other side. And you shouldn't need uh, clips or anything at this point, because everything's all nice and ironed. Oh, I guess we're going to do this side first. You know what? I'm going to get that zipper pull out of my hair again. We're just going to put it down a little bit. There, I'm actually, I think I can get my the inside of my foot against my fabric there, and I think I'll be like just a little ways over. That'll be kind of maybe a good length. Again, this would be a fun time to switch to like a pretty, like this blue color. I do have a, I do have a thread that color. It would have been kind of cute to do that, but we're keeping it simple, keeping the same, same thread on here. All right, with the needle down, I can zip this back up. There we go. So on zippers, it's always about keeping that that uh, zipper pull out of out of your hair. There, this is getting a nice little stitch close to the edge. You know, actually, I could just watch this. <laughs> I need to get to this other side to sew that side on, but I could just pivot. I think this will work. <laughs> Let's just sew across the zipper tape to there. And rotate again, that I don't have to lift this all up and get new, um, like, snip threads or any of that. All right, press our foot down. Let's do that other side. But look at how nice we gave this like a super nice clean edge. I mean, look how polished that looks. That looks so good. All right, so same thing on this side. I think if you had all your pieces cut out, like especially if you were assembly line doing this, like you're making a bunch of like, I don't know, teacher gifts or something, or Christmas gifts, uh, you could cut all your pieces. I mean, it's a way faster to cut a zillion of the same size piece. I'm gonna um, just get my needle down and scooch my zipper out of the way again before I get too far. Um, but then do like each of these steps all at the same time. I think you could crank through you could probably do, like, get to where you're making one every 20 minutes or so. I mean, this one's going to take the whole hour. But once you get going and with everything ready to ready and prepared, you could really zip along, I think. Get a movie on and crank out some gifts. And again, it's a great way to use up old fabric for sure. All right, let's snip these two little ends. Okay, moving on. So here's what we got so far. Uh, you can see that now we got that nice uh, stitched edge that makes it look like super finished, like doesn't it? I mean, it looks really, really crisp and clean. And that's also holding our pieces down, right? So these are never gonna wanna flop back back up and be like bubbly here right because we've we've tacked them down with these with these top stitches okay now this is the part you do not want to forget because <laughs> it is not fun um at this point open the zipper you don't have to open it all the way but it should be a good portion of the way um, i like going about there so it doesn't like flip up I don't want it to like flip up like that while I sew. I want it like it's just a hair down. But this is so important to have an open zipper. If if these sides are together, that's fine. Like if you if you uh, um, did a zipper differently, like if you had made tabs for the end, or if you trim this down and and had sewn these together, that's fine. The trick is you want you need that available open space. Okay, very very important. All right, next up. This is going to be like a little origami piece now, because right now we have 
the uh, lining in the front or the back and then a front piece and the lining again. We're gonna now fold those up so that the lining meets the lining and the front meets the front. So let's just take the front pieces. We're gonna leave those lining pieces and I want those to be together. So right sides together. And I'm gonna just lift this whole thing up and flop it back down and then those lining pieces will also be together. Uh, and it will be, it'll be a little bubbly in the middle here because we got the width of the, the zipper. So what we're gonna do is, you can see that th these sides of the zipper are kind of apart here. We wanna aim them both, like we wanna aim the coil to the uh, um, lining. So we're kind of folding them a little bit. We're folding them to the lining. And the same thing over here, just so you can see, you know, it, it's thick like so, right? We're gonna actually squish that together and the zipper should go towards, bump towards the lining. Now, actually, I think I got that wrong on my swan pouch. I always kind of have to look up, which way do I bend those zippers? Um, but I'm gonna, let's get a clip right there so I can hold those together. I'm gonna, I didn't do that on the other side, I need to do that. So now they're, it's folded, it's like bent, so the coils are f like flattened basically towards, towards the zipper there, or towards the lining piece. Let's do that again up here. All right, both of these should fold towards the lining. The coil should be towards the lining and let's grab those. All right, so we got that down. You don't have to worry about the inside at all. Next up, we need to clip the rest. So what we're actually gonna be doing here is sewing around these, this entire piece and then we're gonna be turning it right side out. So kind of like a stuffed animal where you have to sew it um, inside out and then you turn it right side out so it has nice clean edges. That's the same thing here. And that is why we needed this open space because we have to be able to turn it right side out through that space. So very important, <laughs> again, that open zipper. Uh, we need another open space to turn it right side out though. And we're gonna do that in the bottom of the lining. So the zipper is here, um, parallel with the zipper there. You could do it on the side too probably, but I always end up just doing it the lining piece. So I'm gonna leave, yeah, enough space to get my hand in there. So I got maybe, I don't know, three and a half, four inches here. I'm going to just throw some, like, I'm gonna do colorful clips or whatever, or let's do a double clip. I, I need some sort of reminder that, hey, don't sew beyond that point. So I'm gonna just do two clips. You can do two pins. I just don't wanna stab myself. So, all right, and I'm gonna clip all the way around the rest of this too. We probably don't need too many. Maybe one at the bottom here. We're lining all the edges. One at the bottom here. Let's get it here too. Can't go wrong with too many clips. So all we're gonna do now is we wanna leave that space, right? So we're gonna start here and we're gonna sew around the whole entire shape and back to here. It gets a little wonky by the zipper, but your your machine should be able to handle it. Um, we'll, we'll do that there. Uh, so, all right. The one thing is you wanna make sure that you're sewing far enough away that you're not like going through that little metal piece uh, but that's why we did an inch bigger than our than our piece. So if we sew with a quarter inch seam allowance, we should still be at least a quarter inch away from the little zipper end, the zipper stopper. Stop, the zipper stop. So uh, we should be good. I'm gonna trust our measurements. So we're gonna do a quarter of an inch around this edge here, and I'm gonna start there. Depending on the fabric, you might wanna do a half inch, or if you're gonna be doing uh, okay, I'm gonna start where these two are. If you're gonna handle this a ton or something, you might wanna do like a half inch seam allowance. I'm kinda fine with this. All right, 
So sorry I'm missing like most of the comments tonight, uh, but I'll read through them when we're done here. All right, I'm going forward and backwards here just to lock that in place again. Just so that doesn't pull out because we're going to be handling that opening a bit. All right. I'm going to go about a quarter inch to the end there. With the needle down, I'm going to rotate. Put that back down. And now we're just going all the way around. Quarter inch isn't perfect there, but it's totally fine. All right, we're approaching that first zipper. So I'm going to just take these off. Let's just get my stiletto in there. Uh, and it's bulky, right? All that zipper is bulky. So if your machine is having trouble with it, you can hand crank it um, like one little stitch at a time. But these nylon zippers, uh, even if you hit a zipper, we're just going through the tape here, so we shouldn't hit any part of the zipper. But you could even sew right through the zipper here, and you're probably going to be fine if you're using a nylon zipper pull. Ooh, see, now we need a little help. Just because it is bulky, sh machine might need a little bit of aid, but now we're back into it again. Oop, get that guy. Ooh, one more, I suppose. Needle down, and let's rotate. I like these zipper pouches too. I mean, they are easy. There's no like bells or whistles to them at all. No extra parts. Uh, so you can do them really nice and quickly. And it just kind of showcases the fabric too, since there's, you know, you're not doing much else. Like you're not making fancy tabs, zipper tabs, or, you know, it's not, you're not making like it like super 3D or anything. It's just a nice basic rectangle. All right, I can feel the zipper pull stuff there, so I want to make sure I'm not going over that, which I shouldn't be. Um, all right. All right, made it through that thick bit. So we're back in the lining, and I'm approaching our little ending spot right there. All right, let's back tack there. And that's that. All right, so one little final thing I'm gonna do is trim the corners. So this is going to help me get like a nice point. So I'm not going all the way to the sewn edge, but I'm, I'm getting, you know, I don't know, 16th away. Just a snip, snip of the corner there. That's going to get rid of some bulk that's in, in the corners. Because all that bulk is going to have to be stuffed into the corner. So we're kind of getting rid of that. Okay, little snippets. Only thing left to do, well, a couple more steps, but next up, we could actually start seeing what this is gonna look like. So we can turn it right side out. So now we can just go into that hole that we left. Ooh, I kind of left mine a little small. Now my hand's going through the zipper. That's why the zipper needed to be open. Otherwise you're just gonna stop right there and then you'll be like, oh shoot, I forgot to open the zipper. <laughs> so uh, make sure you do that. And then you can just grab the top here and Pull it on through. You're just turning the whole thing right side out. It's gonna feel crazy. But there you go. Give it a little shake. If you have um, uh, like a chopstick or something, you can get 
into all these corners. You want to get these corners really nice at this point. I might even, I think I do have like a, we'll use, we'll use my hemostat things. These guys got a nice uh, flat edge, so this is, these are good for getting in spots here. I did order a few of these, so they should be coming at some point here. There, get these points nice and good. I like actually going along the seam sometimes too, kind of poofing out that seam. All right, and now this we don't, these, these, uh, the lining ones, we don't have to worry about being poofed out too much. I'm just getting them out of the way because um, we're actually going to turn this the other way. But we need to address our opening. We're going to sew that shut now. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put my fingers in there and the edges are going to want to fold towards the inside, especially when you stretch it out. So I'm just going to go uh, at the start of the opening and to the end. You can put a clip in here if you want, but if I just keep it tight, it should be fine. And this will be stitched kind of on the top too. You'll be able to see it like top stitching, but it's going to be in your, stuffed into your, um, into the bag. So you're not going to see it. Just finding the top. Okay. Right there. So again, I'm just going kind of like a little ways in get our back tack down and then I'll adjust all right so this is popping out I'm just gonna fold those in again and kind of hold it at the end point down here and we'll sew that shut a little back tack That's that. We can snip those threads really nice and close. All right, we have a finished zipper pouch. All we have to do is stuff the lining back in. And you can get your hands in there, get the corners poked in. And uh, there we are. There, you can kind of poke out the corners a little bit. We can probably poke those out a little bit more. I think it's kind of nice with the little fold in as well. There we go, pushing them out. There we go. Oh, that's going to be the perfect size for all my computer gear. So that's it. That is the kind of a basic zipper pouch there. Uh, all other zipper pouches are kind of starting at this point. Like you could add box corners, uh, kind of like what we did here. Uh, we would do that before we, before we turn it right side out, but that would give it some thickness like so at the bottom. Um, you could also, uh, you could sew it with batting like how we did the other one or a stiff, a stiff lining, a stiff interfacing. But I just like the two pieces of fabric or I actually like four pieces, but the lining fabric and the outside, nice and simple, easy peasy. You could give this a press, but I don't even bother doing that. Although one thing I do kind of do is I like making a little zipper pull. I wonder if I have something here. Oh yeah, I could, I could just throw this guy on here. <laughs> so uh, these are some of my, oh man, if I do this, I don't know how long it's going to stay on, but just, just to see what it looks like. I might attach this with like a, a jump ring, which is a little metal ring or something but you can make a little pom-pom, tie that on. Let's just like temporary 
do a little temporary slip knot here. See what it looks like. <laughs> okay. Now, how cute is that for a gift? <laughs> and it, like, seriously, all out of scraps, except for the zippers. But I did, I, um, I at some point just bought a whole pile of these. I did, if I remember right, I bought them from someone on Etsy. So these are, again, if you want something with a similar size as this, these are nine inch nylon zippers. Uh, that should get you where you need to go. Um, I would look on Etsy. There's a lot of good uh, sellers on there, so. Uh, I just got a whole bundle of a pile of different colors, and I just like this size. But there we go. Cute! <laughs> All right, I am going to flip you guys around. All right, so here, here it is. Uh, again, it's so cute with the little zipper, zipper pull on there. <laughs> Uh, I might leave something, if this wasn't something that was going to go in and out of my bag all the time, I'd probably leave that on. Like, if this was a gift, I would for sure put, make a pile of these guys, because how fun with little pom-poms, uh, but that would get ruined immediately in my bag. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. We'll get, I'll have to load this up, and it'll be a nice, I love when I can sew something and use it right away. That's the best. So this is great. I, I hope... I hope that made sense to you, this little tutorial. I know that this has been kind of on the docket for a while, and we've been kind of going around it. We've been doing some uh, a little bit more advanced zipper pouches, but we never just did this nice uh, little uh, simple one. So if you make one, please share in the Penguin Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see it. Um, let me know if you would like me to carry something like some cute zippers or something like that in the shop. Um, that might be a fun thing just to have around. It's always nice to have zippers, <laughs> zippers, if you need to make a zipper pouch quick. Uh, but yeah, so let me know. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow then. I think we will, to, this week is sort of a free week still, since we don't have a full, nice, solid first week of the month. Uh, it's like half of June, half of July this week. Oh, speaking on that, it is the last couple days uh, for the hummingbird embroidery, whether you want the PDF, the fabric only, or the kits, they're all going to be going away on Wednesday, I think, right? Wednesday. Wednesday at 10 p.m. Uh, it's going to be like right after our live, we're going to take them down. And so we have time to switch them over to the new embroidery of the month. Uh, so, all right, you guys. Oh, yeah, this is a free week, so tomorrow I think we'll probably work on the apron. So stitching the last herb onto my green apron. <laughs> Getting these projects, these unfinished projects, checked off the list this week. I think that'll be fun. All these little kind of small projects, uh, and then we can dig into the quilts again. Uh, so that's the plan. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow for that. Have a great evening. Good night.